the record labels don't pay us. They kind of trick us into accepting zero money. I definitely see it a lot. Um, I mean, and they don't know what to do about it a lot of times. So, yeah. <laughs> Why do you think labels just don't pay producers? What are, you know, is that a trick? Is, are they scheming? Are they really that disorganized? What's going down? It is DJ Payne, one with a special guest. He interviewed me. And now the tables have turned. This is Daniel from Producer Royalty. You may have seen Producer Royalty on the various platforms. They just did a Adam Friedman interview. They post a lot of content to Instagram, a lot of producer content to Instagram. I never really knew the person behind the profile until the interview went down. So now I get to ask him some questions. Good morning, man. How are you doing? Good morning, DJ Payne One. It is honestly, this is a very full circle moment for me because, like, I, I said this on your interview, but I've been watching you. Like, you set the foundation for me understanding the producer community in general because I came from the business side and wanted to get into music, but like, wasn't you know, I didn't really know what was going on in the in the hip hop scene business wise until um, I discovered Carl Folks was my initial inter um, inter introduction into like the the hip hop business side, and then you know, exploring his content with you and. And you always talking about the payment issues and all that type of stuff. Um, you really taught me a lot. So, like, this is an amazing moment for me to be on, on your show. So, Well, let's jump right into the payment issues. I feel like, in my experience, and, and tell me if you've had a different experience, there are two major ways that the record labels don't pay us. They kind of trick us into accepting zero money. Um, and one of them is just simply not paying, and the other one has to do with their recoupment uh, math. So the first one, I think this is what you really focus on. Well, you focus on both, but the first one eats up a lot of your time, which is the label simply not paying us. They, they forget, something gets lost, someone is fired, Someone drops the ball. Oh, the check must be misplaced. Hear that all the time. There are people who are chasing advances. You know, I was silly to think when I first got into the music business that an advance meant in advance of the album's release. Really what it just means is they're going to pay you before your royalty check comes. But what happens when the advance just doesn't come, you know? Does that happen often in your experience? Uh, um, so to give a little background on what producer royalty is and like how it came about, um, so I think that'll give some context on like the angle that I, I, I can answer this question from best. Um, so I started, I was working for Adam Friedman, who's the, you know, the lawyer that you interviewed recently, the one I was um, working for. And for him, like 90 percent of it he's built an online audience from really just calling out labels um and and speaking on payment issues for producers specifically and really helping them out giving them game on the legal side so um i was worried and he built a big following from that um and he built a very big producer community from that and so most of his clients are producers so a lot of what he had me doing when i was working for him for a year um was handling producer like basically filling in his role for what he does for the clients i would do with his oversight of course um, and you know, after you get the, the contract, then, you know, you, you redline it. And then after that, um, is, is the payment chasing part you got to learn how to, to get the labels to actually pay your clients after that. Cause there's a whole process after that. So I, he taught me how to do that. And I realized I could kind of, he, he said to me one day, like, you know, this, this payment chasing part isn't necessarily legal. Like you could just go out there and start a business that, that does that most likely. And I was like, oh shit, that's a great idea. So, um, I realized like he was had a lot of clients reaching out saying I never got paid for placements. So I, I made it my business model to help producers track down advances and get their producer agreements as well at the same time because you usually need a producer agreement to get your uh, advance. And so that's the angle I, I came at it from. And that's the area I'm most familiar with. So I guess I, this was a long, you know, winded intro and now I kind of forgot your question specifically. But do I deal with that a lot, I guess was your question, right? Yeah, you see that a lot where a label yeah. will just simply not pay an advance and the producer's just sitting there in the dark. It feels like every single producer... If you have more than a couple placements, you have at least one that you're like, ah, well, uh, yeah, I guess, you know, yes, yes, they, for sure, yes. I definitely see it a lot. Um, I, I mean, it, it, and they don't know what to do with it, uh, do about it a lot of times. So, yeah. <laughs> Why do you think labels just don't pay producers? What are, you know, is that a trick? 
is are they scheming are they really that disorganized i think that it's more so the artist not paying the producer from my understanding and my interpretation and my under um my understanding of the back end it's just the the way the process goes if you haven't been through the major label uh, process before um from my understanding the label gives the artist a budget right and per to clear the album um and then when they give that budget to the artist the lawyer will reach out to the producers and from the legal side, like working for Adam and seeing it on from, um, you know, seeing it from representing an artist's side, like it is a lot of work to clear an album. Like you have to reach out to all these producers. Uh, most of them don't even know what the hell you're talking about. And sometimes you have to explain to them and give them direction on how to go about it. And to clear one album, um, there might be 30, 40 producers on there. So it's, it's a good amount of work. And ultimately that clearance process comes down to the artist's like lawyer to really push through and make sure it's getting done. I don't know what it looks like on the on, uh, from the label side. I want to interview people for on the A and R and label side, maybe accounting side to see what's going on. I'm I'm gonna, you know, I'll, I'll probably have a different answer in like three weeks because I'm going to L A in two weeks to interview a bunch of people um, over there on on the label side. But um, yeah, I, I think so. It's just more so. I think the issue mostly comes down to like just it's it's a hard issue to fix cuz right now I'm kind of blaming it on the on the artist lawyer for the most part right cuz when we work with uh, Adam Friedman posted a tweet the other day talking about like um how empire like empire what's going on like why do you not even make sure that the songs are cleared properly before you uploaded them because there's so many songs released through empire which is a smaller indie label if you don't know um, and like, why aren't they cleared? Like what's going on? So I think the labels, probably the more major labels have like a, a more like, all right, let's actually make sure we have the rights to this. But it seems like the smaller indie labels just don't have a system for actually verifying that the songs are cleared properly. So I, hmm. and on that, you can blame the label to like, make sure, Hey, like to work, maybe they could cooperate more with the artist lawyer to actually push it through. But yeah, I don't know. I did I answer your question? Kind of. Well, yeah, my experience has been all over the place. I, I uh, my first placement, I was waiting on the advance, and the album had dropped, and they still hadn't paid. And I remember, yeah, it was a matter of my lawyer communicating with the artist lawyer. So yeah, you're right. There, the, the artist lawyer was involved, and the excuse was that the check had gotten misplaced. It was just lying around somewhere, and I thought, okay. The check, sure. like a physical check. Yeah, it, uh, this was 2008, so the payment portal portals weren't the norm. So they sent a paper check. Okay, gotcha. So yeah, the check. yeah. So that's a different level of excuse. I know they always ask, like, you can get your payment sent through check now, but I mean, when you fill out the vendor form, you check either you want direct deposit, ACH, or or check. But yeah, I don't, I don't know anybody's done to check. Yeah, it's, so it it's uh, frustrating situation so, okay so how do we fix this if we're you know i know producers grammy winning producers who are just sitting around waiting months if not years to get paid their advance and then what you know if you don't handle that usually you're not getting any back end either because you haven't figured out the first payment and then there's also you know if you want to register your splits with the publisher too a lot of times like BeatStars publishing requires if it's over like a million streams they might their um, due diligence department want to make sure that you actually have the the, the splits that um, they're asking for so they want to see you actually have a signed producer agreement so you got to finish the pr process um, to even get your publishing too but how do we fix the payment issues so I would say in the short term the best thing that you can do to get paid yourself like if, if you if you're just worried how do I fix the issues for my career and the best way to do that is to come correct. And what do I mean by come correct? I mean, like, show this other per make the other person on the other side, the lawyer or the manager's job as easy as you possibly can. So really what I'm doing and what my company is doing is not any much different than what you could be doing yourself. Like really, it's just like we know how to send an email and provide them and, and come like, like if you're on the lawyer on the other side, who are you gonna answer? The 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 producers whose name is is top uda96 at gmail.com with like and they sent mad typos and all this stuff and they have no manager, or you're gonna like answer the one who you've seen their name before, they know how this process goes, they're giving you all the stuff that is required on the system, like during this process, 
And like, they, you know that they know what's going on and you know it's a lot easier to answer this person. You know they're going to follow up in a couple of days because it, like most people on the business management legal side will follow up consistently to get it done um, if you know what you're doing. The, the other producer, you could just ignore it and then it's an, uh, so I think if you're a producer that wants to get paid and you know, not to like, um, plug in producer royalty or lawyers too much. Cause like I said, I think you can do this by yourself, but like one thing that we try to do is actually teach the producer what we're doing. You know what I mean? Like we're not just going to keep you off the email chain and not explain what's going on. Most lawyers will like when you start working with them, they'll just be like, Oh, I'll handle this for you. They, they, Go through the whole process, then they here's the agreement. All right, and then they kind of just send you on your way, like we were talking about. So, um, you know, if you find somebody and you ask the right questions, like, hey, what are you doing? What's the next steps? Like, you know, and, and they could teach that to you. Then moving forward, you can handle the payment process on your own, and potentially the producer agreement if you know what you're doing. You ask them enough questions. It's a small enough placement. You know, maybe you would be able to to understand your producer agreement enough on your own too. But you know, I I think that's my short term. Like that's how. <laughs> but so with producer agreements you're saying producers can handle that on their own without a lawyer in some cases and i've heard i've heard that said um i would go as far th- as to say that they should in some cases i would say they that okay. advanced, i would say that if your advance is really small and it's a really small artist um like and you're gonna spend however well like it's kind of like legal is a risk assessment expense a lot of times, although a lot of times they can get you more money at the same time. It really depends. Like it's super. But I will say that there are some instances where I'm because I don't redline the agreements myself. So if a client, you know, wants to since I'm not a lawyer yet. So like I will kind of help them do that assessment and I'll kind of explain what the situation is. And I'll say what like I'm in a kind of weird position where it's like I know what they should redline, but I just can't do it because I'm not a lawyer yet. So I'll, I'll kind of just give them like this is what you know this and I'll kind of analyze it and, and give them the information in a way to like mi- allow them to make the risk assessment. Do you want these changes for an extra two? Hundred fifty to five hundred dollars. You know what I mean. So, like, but if you're by yourself, it's kind of hard because um, you know, and and you don't know how to interpret producer agreements. Like, you know, if you do hire a lawyer, then you could get they can negotiate you a much higher rate than they are than you would receive without them. Or you know, the, you avoid a buyout when the song blows up. You know what I mean. So, yeah. Well, what do you think about producers hiring lawyers up until the point? they've experienced the agreements enough and communicated and learned from the the lawyers and the process enough where they feel like if the advance isn't high, say it's $1,000, they don't want to pay half of that to a lawyer, then they will take that risk and, and negotiate themselves. I th- I- we all know that the well not everybody but most people know that the three main terms you have to worry about are your advance your points your royalty points and your publishing so if you understand how to interpret those three sections to a good degree and you know that you're getting those three terms and it's a smaller song um then you might not need a lawyer if it's a small if it's a bigger song though and that's when things it's like all right like there's could be a lot of money and if you're really betting or you have a, a theory or um that this song might blow up in the future then i would probably make the the put the expense in because um you know there's a lot of more nuances in there that could become relevant in the future there's not that many nuances in a producer agreement they're pretty much straightforward for the most part and i will say that most of the edits that most lawyers make on producer agreements are very superficial they're not doing much they're just kind of like the boilerplate same things that they just look they they do to make it seem like they're doing busy work you know what i mean so um there's a lot of inefficiencies and they want you to think and feel more dependent on them a lot of times than you actually are but so i think it's possible if you understand those three things then i think it's you know i think it's reasonable even um for certain songs to not have a lawyer what are some of those nuances the the trickier sneakier parts of of a producer agreement that you've seen um one for me that i focus on a lot is master level versus um album level recruitment sometimes it's called um recording level versus project level like but it it depends on the but the difference between those are is with master level recruitment you start getting paid master royalties after the expenses from the the master from the specific song get recouped with album level recruitment you don't start receiving royalties until after the whole entire album or project gets recouped so those are different things and i think that's one of the main edits that i like to focus on um there's some language also that says if another songwriter were to come out during down the line and say hey i have a part of this publishing too there's this one word 
word that you can throw into this one part of this one. <laughs> like literally just put not in this one part. And, and lawyers always just play with this one word in, in the ske- uh, schedule one. I don't know if you know the schedule one. That's like the, the it's like the accounting um, section kind of. There's like eight terms listed out. So uh, you mess around with it there. Um, what are some other s- substantive ones? Well, there's also like um, you could get the advance. It could be 50% recoupable versus 100% recoupable. A lot of lawyers might ask for it 50% recoupable. Um, there is I'm trying to picture if I had a, a producer agreement in my head in front of me right oh, now. I like, do, you, do you see lawyers ask for 50% recoupable and get it a lot of times? Yeah, a lot of times. Like, yeah, it's pretty common. That's probably one of the easiest things. Um, sometimes... Oh, yeah, well, I didn't start asking for that. Sound exchange might not be in there as well, too. So a lo- lawyer will kind of or should always make sure that your sound exchange LOD is attached to the bottom and there's language in there talking about sound exchange. Um, sometimes it'll Yeah, because otherwise you don't get paid any sound exchange royalties if they don't attach that LOD. Yeah, exactly. So you have to attach it. And they might add in, a lawyer might add in also that um, if there's a featured artist, then it's the artist's responsibility to make sure that the featured artist actually signs it because that could be a whole process too. When there's songs mm-hmm. with like four featured artists, especially if it's like we had one with like J. Cole, Jid, and like two other big artists, and it's like, uh, well, it's it's hard to track down all these artists to sign the sound exchange LOD. And it's not like, if, and a lot of times the other lawyer, the artist lawyer doesn't want to give you their contact, their manager's contact info to follow up yourself. So you have to keep following up with their lawyer until that lawyer like actually presses them to sign the LOD, which is like the easiest way to get signatures is to send Dropbox um, or, well, I use Dropbox signature or if you use a DocuSign signature. So just make it easy. You send it to their email. It doesn't even have to be the person that signs it. Their manager just clicks two things and then they sign it. So 